Hi everybody, it's Abby here from Wedge Collective. Um, I am back for module two, which is called Make Plans and Get Paper. Um, I just wanted to begin by saying thank you so much to everybody who came along to the group Zoom. Um, it was really amazing to meet you all and to hear about your answers to module one and the tasks. And we're really pleased to have such a diverse, interesting group of people on this kind of journey with us. So yeah, well done so far. Um, and we're pretty excited to get going on module two. So here we go. So let me move this out of the way. Just reflecting back on module one and what we covered. Um, so that session was called Doing You and it was all about um, personal development and confidence building. Um, so we helped to um, identify your skills and your strengths and your weaknesses. Um, we had a little look at confidence and self-esteem. Um, we talked about setting goals and targets using the PACT system. And then we talked about your work-life balance. Um, so that's just a little recap of what we covered in module one. And here is what we're going to be looking at in module two. So module two is all about business basics and the title of it is make plans, get paper. So what we're going to focus on in this video is uh, these four things. Number one, what is an entrepreneur? Number two, is entrepreneurship right for you? Number three, the different types of business structures. And number four, how to get started in business. So yeah, um, sorry if you hear any sort of background noise, I'm in a little bit of a public place today, but it should be quite quiet. Um, so yeah, those are the four things that we're going to cover and uh, we hope that you enjoy it. So part one, what is an entrepreneur? Um, so by dictionary de definition, um, an entrepreneur is a person who sets up a business or businesses taking on financial risks in the hope of profit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to share with you um, a short video which explores what an entrepreneur is in a little bit more detail. So just bear with me while we open that up and we'll be able to share that with you. Everybody should be able to see this in a minute. And let's give this a little watch. Everyone seems to be talking about entrepreneurship these days. But what exactly is an entrepreneur? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines an entrepreneur as someone who organizes, manages, and assumes the risk of a business or enterprise. Entrepreneurs are change agents. They see needs, wants, and problems as challenges to be overcome, and they know they are the people who can help them find solutions and meet needs. Entrepreneurs know that they have unique skills and talents that can make a difference in the world. They know that they can use their skills and talents to meet needs, do something in a new way, add beauty, or solve a problem. Entrepreneurs have a vision for what they can contribute to the world and are willing to do the work required to plan, launch a business, or social enterprise. When they reach their goals, entrepreneurs create jobs for themselves and sometimes even for other people. Sometimes entrepreneurs even change the world. But wait, can you be entrepreneurs? Yes! Youth entrepreneurs often manage businesses while they go to school, working other jobs, volunteering, or taking other activities. In fact, Industry Canada has said, businesses owned by youth are more likely to be high growth and are financially viable. Who are today's youth entrepreneurs? They are students, innovators, leaders, builders, problem solvers, and dreamers. They are bringing their art and design to the world, solving healthcare and environmental problems, creating jobs for themselves and others, and helping to make the world a better place. OK, 
Okay, so there we had that little video um, all about what it, is, what it is to be an entrepreneur and what is an entrepreneur. Um, we kind of really like those sort of videos where you're able to um, see people doodling. They're quite like interesting to, to watch. So yeah, we hope that you enjoyed that. We'll just head back onto the presentation now. Um, so bear with me while I get into the full screen mode. Um, There we go. Um, so what I think that kind of really stood out for us in that recording, in that little video, was this quote here. Um, so what is an entrepreneur? A person who sees the needs, wants and problems as challenges to be overcome. And they know that they are the people who can help to find that solution. So that's like a real kind of core status about what it is to be an entrepreneur. So um, I thought maybe the easiest way for us um, and for me definitely is to kind of think about Wedge Collective using that sort of definition. Um, so for example, Jodie, um, who set up Witch Collective, for her, one of the main needs or wants or problems that she saw in the world that she wanted to help to solve and overcome was this um, lack of education around business and around um, branding and around what it means to kind of be a young person and go out into the working world, whether that's setting up your own business or just going to get a job. Um, she really found that there was a lack of education, whether that was at college or at school or at university. And that's why um, we decided to do programs like this, because um, we thought, well, if, if nobody else is doing it and kind of sharing that, that information in the right way, then we'd like to have a go at doing it. And then taking myself, um, my kind of need or want or problem that I wanted to overcome. Um, I worked a lot in marketing in creative agencies, in all different kinds of forms. And I helped a lot of businesses with their kinds of problems. And what I found was um, people were kind of continually struggling to deal with um, marketing agencies. People weren't being clear or transparent or honest. And everyone's kind of getting like muddled with different kinds of um, jargon. So for me, I kind of wanted Wedge Collective to break things down, be very clear, be very honest, be very transparent. And that's something that's kind of stuck with us all the way through um, what Wedge Collective do. And it's part of the um, part of the value that we bring to, to our different clients is that um, flexible approach and that honest approach. So yeah, those, the, one of the main things to remember here is it doesn't need to be like, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. It doesn't need to be like a brand new invention. You can just see something that is missing and know that you were the right person to kind of solve that problem. Let's move on. Um, so just continuing on this thread, you might recognize this guy here. Um, so this is Mark Zuckerberg, uh, the founder of Facebook. Um, so whatever you think about him, obviously Facebook is a massive, massive multi-billion pound organization. And Mark Zuckerberg um, started Facebook when he was 19. Um, and within a few years of its launch, it became the most used social media platform across the world. And he's now estimated to be worth 61.7 billion US dollars. Um, but at the time he started Facebook, he says that he was simply trying to solve a problem that he saw around him. So here's a little quote from him. He said, I was just trying to help people connect at colleges and a few schools. That was a basic need where I looked around at the internet and there were services for a lot of things that you wanted. You could find music, you could find news, you could find information, but you couldn't find and connect with the people that you cared about, which as people is actually the most important thing. So that seems like a pretty big hole to get filled. So basically he saw that hole, um, he saw that gap and he thought that he was the person to kind of fill it and um, there Facebook was born. Okay, so moving on, we wanted to kind of consider this, um, is entrepreneurship right for you? Um, so one of the most common mistakes that um, entrepreneurs make is um, kind of thinking that they have to create something that's brand new where, where they can actually just solve a problem. Um, but a lot of the time people create the solution before they have identified the actual problem. So going back to what we were talking about before, you need to identify the problem and then think about how to solve it. Um, so you have to consider what is your need or your want or your problem. 
and then you think about what you can do and then that will form the foundation of your business so part of your task that we're actually going to set this week is um for you to spend a little bit of time thinking about um if you can identify a need or a want or a problem um and if that could form the base for your business idea it should um kind of we could should kind of point out here that it's it's not um it's not if you don't have a business idea that's completely fine if you're doing this process and you're just wanting to enter the world of work or you're just wanting to have things to put on your cv that's totally totally fine um it's just kind of spending a little bit of time asking yourself and seeing if there is that uh, problem that you can identify could just even be your own sort of personal brand um so it's like what can you bring that's, that's a little bit different to the world so don't stress too much about it if you find it difficult in your task but if you have got an idea um this is the time to kind of use use that time that we're giving you to consider it and we can support you in the group zooms so um, continuing on this thread, is entrepreneurship right for you? So a common concern among people that start up their own businesses is whether they have the right personality, characteristic or skills necessary to run their own business. Um, so the good news is there's no like definitive formula for what makes a person a good entrepreneur. We all have our own different characteristics and personalities like we kind of looked at in the 16 personalities test. Um, but we've done our own research and looked at our own characteristics and then looked at um, those of other successful entrepreneurs and kind of came up with these um, top seven things that you, you would want to have if, if you were thinking about starting your own business. So it's really important to remember that this is not a definitive guide. You don't have to have all of these characteristics because these are some things that you can develop. Um, I might not have had all of these in my life, but these are things that we, um, we can acknowledge as skill gaps and kind of grow and develop. So let's take a little bit of a look at these seven characteristics. So number one, self-motivation. Arguably, um, this is a really, really important one. If you're running your own business, you have to 100% be motivated because there is nobody else telling you to get up in the morning, to finish that piece of work, um, to, to go and do that, to go and meet that person. You have to um, motivate yourselves to get the job done every single day. Number two, the ability to take risks. Um, so a risk might be something like um, investing in your, in your project or investing in your business. It might be, um, the whole risk with running your own business is of course being able to kind of make money and sustain yourself so it's kind of being comfortable with that level of risk obviously if you're employed in a job you kind of know that you're going to be getting that um, paycheck every single month whereas if you're running your own business then nothing is kind of certain so you have to weigh up if you feel comfortable and able to take risks number three flexibility so this means being able to kind of approach situations and problems and things in a different way um, so we're quite proud at wedge collective to be super flexible um, we don't say this is our set rigid way of dealing with our clients we are um, really keen to listen to them listen to their needs and then work out a bespoke approach that's what it can kind of refer to when it says flexibility um, passion i'd say this is number one the most important thing if you are passionate about your business or what you're doing then there is little point in getting started um, there'll be so many obstacles that you'll have to navigate all the way through you need to have the passion that um, that will be there to help you remember why you got started um, and then number five resourcefulness so this is um when I mean this, I kind of think about um, something that we say a lot. We say there are no problems, only solutions, um, meaning that there's always a solution. You just have to find it. And that might mean being very resourceful. So looking for a way um, to solve a problem that's not usual. Number six is decisive. Um, this is something that you can definitely work on. It's something that I've really struggled with in the past. And what's good about Wedge Collective is that Jodie and I run it together. So we've got each other to bounce off of and um, help us um, make decisions together. But if you're running a business alone, then all of the decisions are 100% yours, which of course can be a little bit overwhelming. 
And then number seven, um, an understanding of what you can offer. This is super, super important. Um, so it is vital that you've got a really clear understanding of your product or your service and where exactly it fits into the world. Um, you need to know who your ideal customers are, where they are and why they need you exactly. Um, so you'll see a link here below in blue. We'll have this for you in the task sheet. Um, we found a little quiz um, that is going to ask you some questions and it's um, based around would you make a good entrepreneur? So just using those sort of characteristics and personality traits and asking you some questions. Remember, it's just a little bit of fun. Um, these things can be learned and developed. Um, so yeah, just have a little go of that and see how you get on. Moving on to part three. Okay, so this is all about business structures. So once you've established um, whether you'd like to start a business um, and you've got a little bit of an idea of what you want to do, then you'd need to have um, an idea of what business structure is right, right for you. So we're gonna um, go into some more details about them, but these basically refer to what you'd register the business as, what you trade under as. So let's kind of take a look at these. So there are three types of business structures that we're gonna go into. Number one is a sole trader. Number two is a partnership. And number three is a limited company. So let's take a look um, in a little bit more detail about these. So firstly, a sole trader. So a sole trader, if you registered as a sole trader, that requires very little setup and admin. So if you're um, launching by yourself, most businesses, most new businesses, um, if you're just sort of one person starting a business, would um, set up initially as a sole trader. So this type of business structure is not, not deemed to be a legal entity in its own right. So what that basically means is that the business owner, so yourself, for example, if you were set up as a sole trader, you'd be responsible for all of the debts and all of the legalities around the business. So an example of a sole trader would probably be someone like a mobile hairdresser. Um, so that would be just themselves running the business. Um, they would be registered as a sole trader and they'd be responsible um, and liable for anything to happen with the business. So we'll go on to number two. So number two is a partnership. Um, so a partnership is basically an extension to the sole trader structure. Um, this is ideal if you're starting your business um, by yourself is, and you find that like a little bit daunting or you've got like an experienced partner that you can um, join up with. It's, it's basically suitable for two or more people and they will then share the responsibility of the business and the liability. So an example of a partnership structure would be perhaps two friends who have started an online shop together where they're sharing the business and all of the kind of responsibilities that go with that. Okay. Moving on to a limited company. So a limited company is um, very, very different to the partnership and sole trader business structures um, because a limited company is basically a separate entity to the business owner. This means that the business and the business owner are separate from each other in terms of the law and the, and the business basically becomes its own person, its own legal entity. And that means the business owner is not responsible for the losses or the debts of the business um, and the business is responsible for its own finances. So the limited um, company structure is probably one that you would see the most. So if you were going to a shop or a cafe or you're interacting with any other business, they would probably be a limited company. Um, and it's very popular among the small to medium sized businesses. So an example of this would be Wedge Collective. So we're a limited company, um, as are most other kind of small to medium businesses. So just to recap there, um, the three main business structures, a sole trader, usually one person running a business alone. Um, many businesses start as this and sole traders are not a legal entity. Number two is a partnership. So that is two or more people trading together who share the responsibility and liability. 
and number three, a limited company. So that's a separate legal entity to the people who are running the business. Um, if you've got any more questions about that or um, if you'd like a little bit of support on, on finding out which might be right for you, then you can kind of always come to us. And if you do need further support about, um, you know, getting help to start your own business, then there are some great resources out there that we can share with you. Okay, and then moving on to part four, um, how to build a business. Um, so let's have a little look at what we've got here. So, um, there are basically four steps to get started on how to build a business. And we've got a little video that we wanted to show you. So first up, you need to find your idea, find exactly what it is um, that you want to do. And then number two, getting started. You need to just get started um, because if you don't get started, you're never going to know if it can work or not. And number three, you get some feedback from other people, you adapt and you change. And number four, you repeat. So let's have a little look at this, uh, the first part of this video, how to build a business. Um, it explains this process really, really easily and simply. So bear with us while we have a look. Today we'll talk about how to start your own business. First, we're going to focus on starting your business from scratch. And in the end, we will talk about how you can start a business without any money. Let's jump right in here. First, start with an idea. This is pretty straightforward. You need to come up with some kind of idea for your business. Play with your idea. Google it. See if someone already came up with it. Is their business successful? Is the market saturated? How are you going to beat your competition? At this stage, when you're brainstorming your idea, you should keep two things in mind. If you want your business to be successful, you either have to be better than the rest or to be different. For example, maybe you want to start a business selling cookies. Being better means that your prices are lower or the cookies taste better. Being different, on the other hand, means that you are unique. Maybe your competition has defined look and sizes for the cookies, but your company allows your customers to design their own cookies on your website and buy them afterwards. This is being different. Keep this in mind when you're comparing yourself with your competition. Also. A very important question to ask is how much value do you bring your customers? You bring more value than your competition. If not, how can you increase it? The more value your product or service offers, the easier it will be further down the road. So you've analyzed your idea in the market and you've calculated it should work just fine. Great. Begin the second phase. Build your idea into reality. This is where most people get stuck. They just come up with ideas and never act upon. Having an idea is great but it means nothing if you never make it a reality. I can't stress how important it is to get started. It's far better to try it and fail than to not try at all. Just get started. Believe that you'll figure it out as you go. When you get to work on your idea, you will face obstacles that you never thought even exist, and you will be forced to come up with new solutions to overcome those obstacles. As a result, your idea will change and mold itself into something very different than it was when it first started. I wanted to learn something new every day and improve myself and also create videos about it. So I started this channel. At first, I started with a whiteboard and a camera. I would record a time lapse of me drawing images on the board. My drawing sucked, so I had to change something. The idea was the same, but I needed a different approach. I tried animating the videos with Illustrator and After Effects. Unfortunately, that didn't work as well. The videos took too much time to produce. So again, I had to adapt and change. Lastly, I found out a software that can make animated whiteboard videos. It combined my first approach to whiteboard and the second approach animation to produce animated blackboard, in this case, videos. But do you think I would have known about this software if I didn't start it in the first place? No, not in a million years. No way I could have known that you can make animated whiteboard videos with a software if I didn't start it. So many people get discouraged because they think their ideas are not good enough and it will fail. Well, I failed so many times and I'm still failing when I'm making these videos for my channel. But as Thomas Edison said, it's not failing, it's just finding out different ways that don't work. And last, this is very, very important. Test your idea, get feedback, adapt and change, then repeat the process. This is the reason why I changed my second approach. It 
took too much time to get the feedback. This is one of the mistakes a lot of people make. They build their business without testing anything since they've spent so much time on their business, people must like it. I learned this the hard way. I spent more than 200 hours on a single video. I thought, wow, this is brilliant. People will absolutely love it. I posted the video and went to bed. In the morning, I thought, I'd have thousands of views. But in reality, I woke up and I had like 11 views. So don't do this mistake with your business. Build something as fast as possible. Show it to people. Get their feedback. Adapt and change, then repeat the process. The main thing about building a business is really to get started, to persist, and to have the right mindset. If one thing doesn't work, don't just give up and quit. Change it, and eventually you will find something that does work. But how do you start a business without any? Okay, we'll stop that there um, and then just go back because um, we might not have too much time, but we can send you the link if you would like to kind of uh, watch that in full. Um, as, 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 as I kind of said, we like those videos where they are illustrating. They're just really fun to watch and simple to watch. Um, so yeah, just going back to, oh, sorry. Just going back to the points that he covered in that video. So it's all about finding your idea. Secondly, the probably the most important, getting started, something that so many people don't actually do. Number three, getting feedback from other people and adapting and changing your business with that feedback and then repeating the process. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the steps. And then moving on to the last part of the, of the seminar today, um, we found... Um, these seven simple steps um, that you should have a little think about if you're wanting to set up a business. Um, it's kind of uh, really helped us. It really helped us in the, in the startup process um, to kind of consider these things and sort of go through this tick list. Um, so if you're launching a new business, it can be super, super daunting. There can be a lot of things to consider, but actually nearly half a million new businesses start up in the UK every single year with many um, operating success successfully and profitably. Um, so setting up the, the business obviously will involve a lot of different tasks and a lot of different things to do. Um, so you should have a little bit of a plan before you get started. So let's have a little look at these. So number one, this is something that we've talked about a lot is the business idea. So spending time carefully thinking about your business um, and thinking about whether it's feasible. So that's thinking about what the business is, very, very clear on what you are actually gonna offer. Um, that needs to be 100% crystal clear. Um, assessing your situation number two so understanding what the commitments actually are to running your business and um, so obviously if you've got a lot of other things going on you're at college or you're still at school or you're starting university now might not be the perfect time to start your business um, but that's okay you can always come back to it I knew that I wanted to run a business probably from the age of about uh, 20 21 um, but only in the last like year am I now like fully full time at Wedge Collective. I had to go through a lot of different jobs and learn a lot more until I got to the point where I'm at now. So assess that situation and see if now is the right time for you. Number three, your business plan. So this is about creating a detailed plan for your business. Um, business plans can be massive or they can be very, very small and they include a lot of different elements. There's plenty of great templates for them online and we've actually got a very basic one for you in the task this week. Number four, research your business. This relates to market research. So it's all about researching who your customers actually are and who your competitors are. So in terms of your customers, where do they live? What are their purchasing habits? Um, are they male, are they female? Are they 20s, 30s, 40s? All things like that, very, very detailed. And your competitors. So looking at the people that are doing things um, similar to you and kind of um, establishing what it is exactly they're doing and then how you're gonna do it better or different like, it, like we talked about in that video. Number five, registering your business. So we briefly talked about this in the presentation. So choosing the right business structure, whether that's a sole trader or a partnership for a limited company. Number six, sorting your business finances. So deciding if you need external investment or a loan or you um, have saved up enough money and you can use that. And then number seven, getting business advice. So figuring out where to find business advice and mentoring. Um, so we can 100% recommend um, for young people to contact the Princess Trust. 
which is a national organization, operates all over the country, and its sole kind of purpose is to offer business support and career support for young people. So that's 100% who we'd um, um, recommend getting in touch with. Obviously, we can offer you a little bit of support over this program, um, and as much as we'll, we'll, we'll give you as much as we can, definitely. Okay, so that is module two complete. We hope that you enjoyed it. Um, so just to quickly talk about the tasks. Um, so along with this video in the email, you have received the task sheet um, attachment, which, which um, out has basically got this on it, as well as um, two worksheets. So the first task, we want you to consider the need or the want or the problem that you can solve with your business idea. So spend some time considering if you have a problem or a need or a want that you could turn into a business and have a go at writing these ideas down, however big or small they are, it doesn't matter. Just consider if this is what you might like to create a business out of. And don't worry, like I said, if you don't have anything, it's, it's not a big deal at all. And then number two, complete the BBC quick quiz on would you make a good, good entrepreneur? Um, so that's looking at the characteristics and personality traits, but remember, it's just a little bit of fun. And then number three, um, complete the two worksheets that are attached to the email. So the first one is on famous entrepreneurs and the second one is a basic business planning worksheet. Um, as always, you can contact us if you have any problems. Um, but have a go at these three tasks and bring your answers and um, what you've written down along to the group Zoom, which will be next Tuesday. And we'll send you an invitation to that a little bit nearer to the time. And I think that is everything. So thanks very much to everyone um, for watching and um, hopefully we will see you all next Tuesday for the next Zoom.